Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop. Mars is as close as it is right now than it will be until the year 2035. So if I want to record Mars and get a good image of it, I better do it right. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Over the past several days, no, no, past several weeks, I can think I can change that to past several months. We had a lot of cloud cover here in the Savannah area and a lot of rain. I mean, we've been seeing rain coming and going and in torrents at times. Well, the grass is green and the garden is in full bloom. That's the good news about that. However, it's really bad news for the astronomy, particularly astrophotography. However, in the last couple of nights, the sky had cleared. Tuesday, Mars was at its closest approach to Earth, that was October 6, at about 38.5 million miles away. Now, obviously, here in Savannah, it was cloudy that night. But last night, Wednesday, the sky had cleared, and I was able to capture the planet Mars. I also grabbed in uh, uh, Jupiter and Saturn while I was waiting and uh, fine-tuning the camera. Let me show you how I captured Mars. This is what I did for Mars. For planetary observation, it's a good idea to have a long focal length uh, telescope. In this case, the uh, Celestron 11 Edge HD has a focal length of 2800 millimeters, which makes that an F10 focal ratio. And that's good for planetary observation. However, to really fine tune your planetary observation, uh, Barlow really enhances things. For example, a 2x Barlow will take the focal ratio F10 up to F20. And uh, for uh, the one I use today, I put on the uh, High Point Scientific 3X Barlow, and that takes it from an F10 to an F30. Now that really zooms in tight on the planets. Now the uh, bad part about that is it really narrows down the field of view, and you get a very small picture of uh, the stars and the background planets, uh, background objects behind it, and it's very, very difficult to uh, find your object. You've got to make sure your system is uh, well aligned and that your star alignment is uh, right on to get uh, your telescope anywhere near the planet. Also, when recording the planets, uh, it's, it's a good idea to have a good capture program. Now, there are several great programs out there. The one I use is SharpCap Pro. And with that, you're able to, uh, the, with the camera I'm using, the Altair uh, Hypercam 294C, I'm able to uh, make a region of interest. In other words, in instead of taking the whole 5,000 pixels or 4,900 pixels, a uh, square uh, rectangle, whatever, I'm able to break it down into uh, 640 by 480, for example. So I'm only using that to record. That greatly increases the frame rate. So with planetary motion, uh, the fastest frame rate as possible. Uh, and particularly with Jupiter, you need a very fast frame rate because Jupiter is rotating so fast. If you take, uh, say, 5,000 image, images and it takes, what, say, uh, 20 minutes or so to take 5,000 images at a slow frame rate, well, the planet has moved somewhat. You know, it, 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 it rotates in less than 10 hours. Uh, total rotation. Uh, that would cause the images to be blurred somewhat. So what you want to do is increase the frame rate and by doing that uh, you can use a USB 3 uh, camera and if you have a good a close connection with a camera to your recording computer then you can get your frame rates from say two frames a second up to well 65 or so frames a second there you can start taking a lot of images in a very short period of time and then from there you take the uh, the, the movie file that it creates and you put it through a, a, a stacking device the one i use is auto stackered and that takes the movie file and uh, it, it compresses it into one particular image. And you have the options of how you're going to do that and so forth and, and what's uh, the size of the image it's going to be. And then from there, uh, I take it into a program called Registack. And Registack uh, will help clear up the picture tremendously. I want to show you that. Uh, and, 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 and this is how it's done. Let me show you. All right, one of the first things I do after I capture the planet itself in SharpCap, uh, and, and this example here, I just took a thousand frames. I was just testing that out. 
and um, eventually I ended up taking 10,000 frame pictures. But anyway, after uh, going from a sharp cap, I take it into uh, this program here, which is called Auto Stackered, and I open up the file and bring it in, and there it is right there. And then the first thing I do is I set a grid and place the grid on there and then analyze that which is rather quick what one, one thing is if you well this was 10,000 frames now um, uh, it takes a little bit longer when you have 10,000 frames versus 1,000 frames or 500 frames uh, I've heard some people even using 25,000 frames which will even take longer to analyze but anyway we're almost done here with the analyzation and after that is relatively quick I'm just going to use 20% uh, of the values, the best 20% pictures, and uh, I'm just going to take a regular stack. I'm not going to drizzle it. Uh, I'm just going to take a regular stack. RGB align, keep on, and save in, in, in the folder. And uh, I'm not going to use the normalizing stack and the sharpen. I'm just going to leave it alone. And uh, Altair Hypercam 294. All right, it's done. Now from that, I can, I can just minimize this. I go into a program called RegiStack, and I open up the file, and there it is right there. And the next thing I do is go into um, RGB um, Balance. And here I can go to Auto Balance, and it usually does a pretty good job. Uh, it's gonna have to brighten it up a little bit, and I can do that over here with the uh, contrast. Uh, well, maybe too much. Right there, yeah, that, that looks that's looking pretty good. I, I want to add a little bit more red, a little bit more green, and maybe a touch more blue, a little more red. So I want to keep that polar ice cap nice and white right here. Uh, there I have. Let's go with Mars too. These are pre-saved schemes. And well, I can just play with it over here. I can sharpen it up a little bit. And there you go, that looks pretty good. Then I do do all, and then save image. Reggie stack. Okay, and it's done. So there, uh, I can take it into um, Photoshop and, and, and touch it up even more. But that's basically how I do it. Well, Mars is going to be visible for the next several months, but over the next couple of days and nights, actually, it is going to be at its most brilliant. And it's going to be at opposition on October 13th. That's when the Earth is directly between the sun and the planet Mars. And you should be able to get some great views of the planet Mars. Actually, right now, is the fourth brightest object in the sky, only to be outshone by the sun, moon, and Venus. It is actually much brighter than the planet Jupiter. But Mars is now at its best, and it won't be this good until the year 2035. So if you do have a camera or a telescope and or both, get them together and start looking to the sky for the ruddy red Mars. I've been using a rather large computer uh, right next to the telescope so I can get that fast USB 3 connection so I can really increase the frame rates from up to what uh, two frames per second up to uh, in some cases 60 frames per second. You got to have a computer right next to the camera to really get that great connection. And I, I have been watching other YouTube videos and Amy's Astro, Amy White, had a great suggestion on hers and she talked about this thing called the BMAX. And I said, what is a BMAX? Believe it or not, this is a full-fledged computer. This is just about as strong, if not stronger, than that computer I've been using that's next to this telescope, which is a monster, which weighs about 35 pounds. This weighs, I don't think it weighs two pounds. And it does everything I need, and I can remote access this through Wi-Fi. 
Uh, and it's a good connection, but I get a little bit better connection by using the uh, network connection. So that network line that I ran outside uh, is for good use as well. So I'm gonna be hooking this system up to the telescope and perhaps my next video will be an explanation and a report on this uh, BMAX computer. It's a Windows 10 computer, unbelievable. I was basically uh, knocked my socks off when I plugged it in. So I'll, I'll tell you more about that coming up. Well, anyway, I hope you like my videos and I do a lot from out here in the Heavenly Garden. It's my Heavenly Backyard astronomy from the Heavenly Backyard Garden. And uh, I, 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 if you like to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'm already over a thousand subscribers on my way up, hopefully to get 2000 fairly soon, who knows? Uh, well, that's up to you. Anyway, please subscribe. I'll be grateful if you did. Meanwhile, unless you need rain, Clear skies, everyone.